Welcome back to Factor Fictional. I'm your host, Veronica Belmont, and this week's episode is going to be a real hot button issue. I can't wait to get to it. But first, a little bit about last week's show. We had the fantastic Johansson on from It's Okay to Be Smart, and we talked about cybernetics. We talked about the future of cyborgs. And at the end of the day, I feel pretty confident that cyborgs are in our future. Maybe I'm not going to get my chainsaw hand, but I think that we are really going to continue to evolve as a species in ways that we can do with the use of of cybernetics and technology and prosthetics. All right, so a few statements from the YouTube peanut gallery on last week's episode. Evil Genius 04 says, Chainsaw Hand is for fighting zombies and deadites. Duh. Yeah, duh. That's why I want it. Den Dodge claims, Guys, you guys with your usernames, I swear. Cyborgs already walk among us. Pacemakers, hearing aids, etc., and those little eye implants things that uh, that rich blind people can now get. That's not very nice. It's not as cool as a chainsaw hand, but it is real technology. And of course, one could argue that our dependence on computers and smartphones makes us a type of cyborg, albeit not physically. All right, yeah, I can kind of get into that. I mean, we are so heavily involved in our technology day to day. In fact, you could almost say Google is like, a second brain. But let's think less about the past and look to the future once more. This week we are talking about genetic modification a la Gattaca, for example. You guys remember that film, it was fantastic. But it deals with taking the genetic traits of parents and creating essentially a perfect child by genetically modifying them to have all the best traits of those parents. Is that something that we can look forward to or be frightened of in the future? I have a specialist to find out. And to continue the subject of genetically modifying mankind, I'm joined by my friend Anne Holden, who is a genetic anthropologist. What does that mean exactly? So what I do, or what I have done, is I take DNA of people living today, and I use it to trace back their origins. Ooh, so like ancestry stuff. Ancestry stuff, going back in time to see where they lived, where they came from, and how they got to where they are today. That's awesome. So you were the, basically then the perfect person to ask about genetic modification from a movie like Gattaca, and you were telling me that you rewatched it again for this episode. So it was, was there anything that stood out immediately where you were like, that is not at all real or true in, in any sense of the word? Right, I mean, that movie came out 15, 16 years ago, and they didn't really know that there would be things like iPads or iPhones. So what struck me was how old the computers looked. <laughs> <laughs> Old-timey, mid-90s mid Mac computers where apparently we're going to be using the future, which was really interesting. interesting. You know, I, I wrote a blog post about that this weekend. Totally beside the point, that's for another day. Um, but so in Gattaca, of course, they, they have the ability to physically and mentally perfect humanity um, and, and unborn children. They can actually change the characteristics of a child um, in utero. So is, is that something, ethically speaking, that uh, that could potentially happen? Is, is that something that we can do scientifically but wouldn't do ethically? I think that's exactly right. I mean, scientifically, we could possibly, at some point in the future, genetically modify, you know, the fertilized egg to, say, get rid of disease risk, or to mm -hmm. modify genetic, genetic diseases such as Huntington, cystic fibrosis, things like that. But the idea of modifying it to such an extent to get rid of alcohol addiction or change personality, that sort of thing is also scientifically not there and may never be there. And also, ethically speaking, I don't think that's really a road we want to go down. Is there any point in the future where something like a, a hair sample or a sample of blood can tell you about what the person is going to be like personality-wise in the future? Personality-wise, it's all really up in the air. I mean, there are studies that happen every day um, all over the world about link between genetics and personality and mood, but there's so much more to who you are than just your DNA. Especially in Gattaca, when it was made, people didn't really understand the things like, you know, microbes living on your body that influence your diet, your mood, um, you know, your disease risk. Wait, what? So <laughs> Expand on that. <laughs> so something that's happened recently, the past five years or so, people have found that about six to ten pounds of our body weight are microbes. No. Yes. Wait, can I just get rid of them and lose like <laughs> six to ten pounds immediately? You'd also probably get really sick. Oh. So, you know, we have thousands of species of, of microbes living in our gut that help us, you know, digest food. There's a link between the microbes in your gut and your personality, your behavior. So that sort of thing people didn't know about when Gattaca was written in the late 90s, mid-90s. So just having your genetic code 
disregards that entire other aspect of who you are. There's also different changes in your genetic code that we don't even understand yet. How do we know that will not end up adversely affecting the, the fetus? Interesting. Yeah, because I know in the movie, they're trying to take the best aspects of both the mother and the father to make almost, uh, what do they call them? They call them um, valid or invalid. Valid or invalid, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so a valid human would have all the best genetic aspects of the mother and father. Yeah. Um, so could we do that for physical traits, though, at the very least? There are, there are some physical traits that are very obviously have a genetic component. So hair color, mm -hmm. um, eye color, things like that, um, that you know, if you're born with blue eyes, you have blue eyes usually your whole life, um, something like that. But even things like height or um, skin tone, that's an influence by your environment as you as you age, as you mature. So, you know, how much food you get as a young child may determine how tall you end up being when you grow up. So it's not only just your gen your genes; it's all these other things that are interacting to make you you physically, mentally, personality wise. So, how much do you think of it as environmental versus genetic? It depends on the trait. So, like I said, eye color is pretty much hereditary, but height is about 50% hereditary and 50% environment. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty intense. I had no idea that that much was affected by the environment. Exactly. Um, diseases, sometimes they're very obviously inherited, like cystic fibrosis, um, but then, you know, heart disease very much determines how many, you know, burgers you eat <laughs> a week. In the film, they say, it is said that a child conceived in love has a greater chance of happiness. How would a society as seen in Gattaca handle this theory? I got the impression in Gattaca they were pretty much into the data, quantitative data. They weren't really into the non-tangible idea of love and happiness in that way. So they would probably spin it in a way that scientists are actually spinning it right now, saying that people who grow up in a loving home, that it's stable financially and emotionally stable, have a better chance of becoming happy, being happy themselves. So they might sort of spin it that way, which takes a lot of fun out of it. The chemical in our brain, serotonin, which you've probably heard of, there's a study a few years ago where people who had a different genetic modification of, of serotonin, different mutation of, of the gene that encodes for it, had different levels of happiness, and they were born with that. And they're inherently more or less happy based on this one study. There's a lot going on there in the brain we don't even know about yet, so it's a lot to be determined, but there is definitely this genetic aspect of happiness when you go down to the chemical levels in your brain. So the main things that we're thinking about where I work um, and what we do is not necessarily about genetic cloning or, or trying to find the perfect person or the perfect, you know, the perfect baby, but to use what we know about DNA, about um, other genetic factors to sort of modify diseases. So regrow heart muscle that has been damaged um, in a heart attack or grow new neurons in your brain if you have Alzheimer's disease or Huntington's. That's the sort of next wave of the field of stem cell re research and regenerative biology and all of that is because of genetics and what we learned about it. That's so interesting. So, okay, so what I'm getting from this is that it is possible or the, the science is getting there, um, but really it's the, the ethical issues that could probably put a stop to that kind of you know genetic modification right. uh, within the womb. Right. I mean, even right now you have uh, counselors who will counsel couples who have high risks of diseases to, to help them understand if they want to have kids or if they're doing in vitro fertilization, how to pick you know the embryos that are don't have that one genotype that will end up causing disease. That is completely happening right now. But if you go the further, the further, thinking about alcohol addiction, personality, that's something that we probably wouldn't want to go down or even couldn't go down. I'm going to grudgingly say fact with the caveat that we really shouldn't be going down that road. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible, but we should probably let well enough alone. Exactly. I told you guys we would get more facts coming up. I know, I don't like to crush dreams of, of cool stuff in the future either. So it's nice to have a fact every once in a while, even if it is kind of dark like this one. But anyhow, I want to know what you guys want to see on the show going forward. You've making some amazing suggestions. One that I'm really looking forward to is weather in Game of Thrones. That one's going to come up. So if you have any questions, leave them in the YouTube comments below. And also, some of you have suggested an Inception episode. Is it possible for us to affect our dreams, to create lucid dreaming? That is something that I've been really fascinated by, and I'm looking for a specialist to talk to about it right now. So if you have any suggestions for that, also let me know on the YouTube page or tweet me at Veronica. That's all for this week. Until next time, you've been watching Factor Fictional on TechFeed. Oh, and one more thing my producer reminded me before we go. We're planning on doing a live Google Hangout at some point soon. Would that be something you'd be interested in? Should we do like a roundtable discussion about a topic? Should we bring in experts live on the show? Let me know what you think about that idea in the comments as well.